Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today's gonna be a day where we're gonna talk about test equipment. Because I tell people all the time that you can use your electrical safety meter for measuring anomalies with equipment, specifically with current and watching current draw. But did you know that there's a consumer rated product that you can get right now today that does a lot of the same heavy lifting features that this guy here does, but it does it in a much smaller and very much more affordable package. And I'm talking about the kilowatt, specifically the kilowatt P3, which is the newest iteration. So let's go ahead and talk about the kilowatt. I'll show you some of its features and whatnot. And that way there, maybe you don't have to lug one of these guys around. You might also save some money. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay guys, this is the kilowatt power monitor. It is a very small device. It's got a, a NEMA plug on the back, NEMA plug on the front. Notice that it is a 15 amp, although I don't know if it can handle more amps. No, it says max 15, 120 volt standard, and it does some really cool things. So let's go ahead and take a look at this little guy. Wow, it's first off, it's really lightweight, and you can see that I paid uh, about $30 for it. Not too bad, you know, it, it just is what it is. And you can kind of see what the readout is supposed to look like. And toss that guy over here. So there's a series of menu buttons on the front. There's menu, which switches the modes. There's up, down, reset, and set. Pretty simple. It does a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I have an extension cord right here. So you all can see exactly what it's like. Boot up time is seconds. <laughs> Absolutely seconds. And let's see, first off, I think what I'm going to do is just go through the menus because as soon as I plug something into it, it's going to start calculating because that's what this guy is very much so known for is a calculator to measure your energy usage over a period of time. And that could be one day, one hour, one week, one year. It will tell you how much electricity a specific device uses over the course of a year. So let's go into it. Cost. Um, this is a modified version of an old version that I've seen where you used to have to hold buttons and stuff. So um, here, pretty simple. Cost per day, cost per hour, total. Hmm. 1,000, 1,000, 1,003, 1,000. There we go. Reset. Okay, so I just zeroed out the meter. And you can see it actively calculating. And I have 120 volts. Let's see, can I set the cost? So I wanna set the cost per kilowatt hour and you can see it, it defaults to 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So what it's going to do is at 25 cents per kilowatt hour, it's going to measure any device that I plug into it at 25 cents per kilowatt hour, which is probably a going rate right now. I don't know, it's between 20 and 30 cents per kilowatt hour, I believe. So um, 120 volts, we got our cost, which will tell us for the day or whatever. Um, we've got our rate, we've got kilowatt hour, we've got the elapsed time, so the amount of time that we've been recording. So as of the moment, you can see right there, we've been recording for one minute. And let's see, we're back to volts. Okay, that's pretty simple. I uh, let's see, kilowatt hour. Can I switch those? I can't switch those. Okay. Well, this is a simpler version than the one I'm used to. So we got 120 volts. We've got power factor. So right now we have a power factor of one because I have nothing plugged into it. So that's extremely efficient. <laughs> I have 60 hertz, so it's measuring um, the frequency of my line, my incoming power. My VA. Now, VA is, uh, um, what is it? It's volt amp or whatever. It, it's kind of tough to explain. And the cool thing is, is you can plug stuff into here, 
and figure out if things like your UPS are large enough to handle it. So your UPS is often measured in VA. We get watts, amps, very, very useful. Back to volts. So watts and amps are two of the things that I am going to use probably the most. And one of the things that I have to um, go ahead and test this guy out, right next to me here is the M4 Chattanooga. It's the guy that was getting a little too happy on the current. And it's got a 1500 watt heating element. And the cool thing about this guy here is it does, even though it's a simple calcul calculation, it does the calculation for you on the watts. So we can see exactly how many watts this guy's really pulling. So I have got the cord right here. It's on, on the switch. So as soon as I plug this guy in, it's gonna start pulling some current because it's currently at room temperature. So let's check it out and let's see how many uh, watts this guy's currently pulling. Here we go. I'm gonna try and get it in frame. There we go. And I did see it dim just a little bit. 1300 watts. And one of the things that I was noticing is that as it heats up, the heating element would drop its resistance, or at least that's what I was expecting to happen because the, the current was going up. So that means that your watts are probably going up. That's, you know, Ohm's law. So here we are. I've got uh, 1335, 36. You can see it right there. And while we're waiting for that guy to heat up, let's go ahead and look at how many amps it's pulling. So right now you can see it's pulling 12.09. That's fine. That I'm happy with that. That's exactly what it should be pulling. Um, close enough. But the problem is, is this guy will creep up. And that's what makes the M4 Chattanooga that I have here a fire hazard. There. I'll try and hold it right there so that you guys can see it. So 12.11. As that heating element gets hotter and hotter, mind you, it's being cooled by the water. So as the water increases its temperature, the heating element is naturally increasing its temperature. And that's where I was seeing its resistance dropping and the current was going up. I think I shut it off at 12.6 amps. Or no, no, it was 15.6 amps. 15.6 amps, holy cow, that is almost circuit breaker popping type of current. And that is definitely a fire hazard. So at 1500 watts, this, oh, you can see right here, the voltage drop, it was at 120, now it's at 110.6. It actually has some voltage sag there because of this guy pulling so many amps. Also, I have it going through this extension cord stuff and you're gonna have some voltage sag on that as well. So we're at 1340 watts. And here's one of the cool things, is we can actually check and see, like already, this thing has cost me one cent to operate right now. So it's showing you a live update it's showing me how much it costs per hour. So it cost me 13 cents per hour. It cost me $3.34, 36. Well, it's going up, look at that. Nice. <laughs> this is me losing money. You can see it, it's happening live right here, guys. 350, still going up, guys. I gotta watch the camera so that I don't get the lights in the way. So it's saying that per week, this Chattanooga M4 would cost $25 to operate. Jeez, this thing's an energy hog. Whoa. So that means it costs me right now, before the, the current increases, it's costing me about $125 per month and increasing. Notice that. So as that heating element gets hotter, it's going to go up. And it's saying per month, $117. That was pretty close. Yearly, $1,450, and mind you, it's going up. Notice, because everything else is going up. So, we've been only operating for six seconds. Oh, let's, go, let's go back to that one. Okay, now we do the up and down. 
So power factor, we're still at a power factor of 1. 0.09 amps. And here's the interesting thing about the kilowatt. You can use this around your home. You plug something into it and you let it run for a day or a week and then it will tell you on average how much that device costs you to run. Now this right here, me just plugging it in real quick, that is not a realistic average because the Chattanooga M4, it's in a heating phase, it's at, it's at room temperature. But once it gets to temperature, it's gonna cycle on and off the heating element. So this is not currently a realistic calculation. That's why things like refrigerators and freezers and heating elements, you have to allow them to climatize to a normal stable temperature and then you can take a good reading. Right now, this would be a horrible time to actually start my measurements with this guy. And the larger the sample size, which means if you leave it on for a day, if you leave it on for a week, if you leave it on for a month, you're gonna have a much more accurate cost analysis for how much that device costs to operate. So we are at 1,340 watts, and it's really, it's not gonna change because the water is very cold. It's, it's almost straight out of the tap type temperature. And uh, there you go. It's very simple to use. Um, I don't really like the interface. I mean, it's, it's kind of easy. Like, I, I haven't read the manual at all on it yet, so I know that I could set the rate by hitting set and holding it. That was pretty intuitive. Kilowatt hour, you can see I've already burned 0.12 of a kilowatt hour. So a tenth of a kilowatt hour already. And I'm only running it for eight minutes. See, right here, this is the, the stage where I wish I could use the up and down much more intuitively. I have to get the voltage. And then when you get the voltage, now you can go up and down, see your power factor, your hertz, your VA, your watts, your amps. And your volts. There you go. So guys, I'm gonna unplug this guy before it starts a fire. That is the kilowatt. A very cool little device. And probably one of the cool things about it, let's say you have a device that is malfunctioning, pulling too much current, maybe a dead short circuit. Wouldn't you say it would be much more cost effective to use one of these on a suspect device that's pulling maybe a little too much current than blowing up an expensive electrical safety meter? Think about it, guys. A $30 device versus some electrical safety meters are thousands of dollars. It's a no-brainer. And the cool thing is, is this guy can follow you everywhere. You can get like a neat little zip case. And if you have any suspected devices, you can plug this guy in, read the current, read how many watts it's pulling, and you can actually balance out things like circuits. How cool. More you biomeds should be balancing out circuits because staff will heavily load particular circuits because they're easy to see and easy to use. As you guys should know, circuits need to be balanced out. That way there, we're not popping breakers at very intricate moments like surgeries, right? So anyway, guys, that's the kilowatt. This is the P3 kilowatt, about $30. I will leave a link for it in the video description down below where you can check it out. Very cool in effect. It's a very effective device. Maybe I will open it up some day and do a teardown. Who knows? But right now, this guy here is just another tool in my arsenal so that I can troubleshoot devices in the field pretty easily. Thanks for watching, guys.